Hello, I'm Ken McKendrick from Herrick Watt University in Edinburgh and I'd like to tell you about a new method that we've developed to study reactions at the surfaces of liquids. So this is important because many real world processes take place at the gas liquid interface and the reactivity depends intimately on what's present at the liquid surface which might not be the same as is present in the bulk. So to study these processes what you have to do is develop some kind of a method which is surface specific. So there are two broad classes of things that people have done there. One is based on spectroscopy where the break of symmetry at the liquid surface means that a signal becomes allowed. Or the other, which is part of what we're doing, is to fire a projectile of some kind at the surface and either its penetration into the liquid or its escape from the liquid is restricted and so the signal that you see is specific to the liquid surface. What makes our method different, which is what we think is unique, is that we use a chemically specific probe where the projectile that we fire undergoes a chemical reaction with only selected groups at the surface of the liquid. This is illustrated in the graphical abstract in our paper. And so the products that escape into the gas phase are a signature of what was present at the liquid surface. OK, we've come down to the lab now, and my colleague, Carla Waring, who's a PhD student on the project, is going to tell you how the experiment works in practice. OK, so our experiments take place within this vacuum chamber, and inside the chamber is a bath, which is uh, like this one, which is filled with the liquid that we want to study. Inside the bath, uh, we place a wheel, which is rotated in the bath, and that gives us a continually refreshed liquid surface. Our oxygen atoms are generated by photolysis of a suitable precursor above the wheel. Um, some of the oxygen atoms formed will then travel to the liquid surface, abstract the hydrogen from it, and then return back to the laser axis as OH, where we detect them with a second laser pulse by laser-induced fluorescence. This experiment gives us two kinds of experimental outputs. The first is an, ap an appearance profile, like, like that shown in figure two of the paper. Um, that's when we fix um, the wavelength of the laser on a specific OH transition and we vary the time delay between firing the photolysis and the probe laser. The other experimental output is an excitation spectrum where we vary the wavelength of the probe laser with the, with the timings between the two lasers fixed. These two, pro um, these two experimental outputs give us information on the translational energy and the internal energy of the OH products and they tell us that the reaction must be taking place at the extreme outer layers of the liquid surface. So I'd like now to describe briefly the application of these techniques as a surface-specific analytical probe to a family of ionic liquids. We describe this in, in more detail in our paper. Essentially what we have is a nimidazolium ring with uh, two alkyl chains. One of them is always a methyl group and the other one is an alkyl, alkyl chain of varying lengths. What we hope to discover was whether the presence of the alkyl chain at the surface increases as the chain gets longer because previous work had suggested that that might be true and in fact it is. Our results definitely confirm that. The key results are shown in figure three of our paper uh, where you can see that the reactivity even when allowing for the number of H atoms in the alkyl chain increases very substantially as the chain gets longer from the shortest ethyl chains to the longer C12 chains. There were also complementary experiments done in Tim Minton's lab at Montana State University with whom we collaborate using a, a different experimental technique based on molecular beams and they also confirmed that the reactivity increases very substantially with chain length which is a nice confirmation of our results. In addition, George Schatz's group at Northwestern University have done some very nice molecular dynamic simulations and they also confirm this increased preference for longer chains to be present at the surface. So we have a very good overall agreement between two independent experiments and some complementary theory. Well, I hope we've given you the flavour of this new method that we've been developing and you can see, at least in principle, that the projectile could be varied to react with different liquids, which we hope shows that there are prospects for this being applied much more widely in future.